They've seen me in the first quarter of my life. I was prime time. The second quarter of my life, I went to television and this and this. I was just prime. Now the third quarter of my life, I'm coach prime. And they like, this Negro still winning. When is he going to go? <laughs> God, I mean, how many quarters do he get? Yo, 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 welcome to RG3 and the Ones Away Sports and Entertainment Original presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Robert Griffin III, and on this show, we're talking to the Ones. I mean, the Ones at the top of their industry in sports and entertainment who don't just know the game, but also study the game and give it right back to you. Oh, uh, who am I? You know, I'm just the one that told you guys that the Cowboys needed a change of identity. And now they need to change their head coach. That's right. Fire Mike McCarthy and bring in someone who is going to establish a culture of winning. Speaking of a culture of winning, Jay Gruden doesn't know anything about that. But if he wants to talk, <laughs> boy, oh boy, do I got some fire for him today. But before we get to that. All right, guys, I want you to know, we need you to like and subscribe to our YouTube page. That's right. Like and subscribe and make sure you follow us on social media at RG3 and the ones, because every single day we're going to be dropping clips from each episode to get you excited for the next episode. And in case you just want to listen, you can listen wherever you get your podcast. So let's make that bad boy happen. Follow us on social media, like and subscribe to our YouTube page and let's keep this bad boy rolling. All right, guys, coming up on this episode, I'm talking to the one who took the college football world by storm two times, actually three times. I'm talking about the one who's one of the best and strongest pass defenders to ever play the game. The only athlete to play in a Super Bowl, the World Series and be a Hall of Famer. I'm talking about the one, the only, the myth, the legend, Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Coach Prime. Now give him his theme music. (laughs) <laughs> here i go what's up coach how you doing baby hey i think you may be the only one who has just as much fun as i do at night i first of all I follow you <laughs> i follow you adamantly on both uh, channels so you know instagram and twitter what do you do with your family and your kids you're one of the greatest fathers ever i feel and just your entertainment value, man, on television is 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 phenomenal. And you're so true and so honest, you know, on social that I love it. I mean, you 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 are unapologetically who you are, man, and I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to be that way. And I learned that from from you, to be quite honest. And and I'm gonna go ahead and just you know address the elephant in the room, Coach. One one, I appreciate all the love you've ever shown me. You've always been supportive. Um, you know, and you, you when, I, when I wasn't playing to my best ability in the NFL, you held me accountable there. And when I was playing to my best ability, you were all on board with me the whole time. So I appreciate that. But just watching you uh, through your development as a as a human being, as a coach, as a player, all these different things. I believe that Mike McCarthy needs to be fired. Dallas Cowboys <laughs> and that you're the coach. So we just you're the get coach that needs to replace him. We're going to we gonna get right to it. We're going to get right to it off the I top. I would never coach pros. I'm never, I'm never. I got a problem. You played with guys that was getting a handsome yeah. check that didn't want to play. Right. How? That's true. How, how, how am I going to handle that as a coach? When I'm walking through the locker room <laughs> and I'm seeing this guy, I know nothing ain't wrong with you, but you're in the training room faking. You know, see here, I can regulate, I can regulate that. Isn't it? At the next level, man, come on, man. These cats don't even want to practice no more, man. So it's some great, uh, phenomenal athletes. I think the game is is getting better and better because the athletes are phenomenal nowadays. Right. I, I can't do it. I love the college game. I love still having influence on the minds and the games of these young men. I, I love shaping right. and molding them. I can't. I couldn't do that at the next level. At the next level, you expect them to be professional and do your job. Right. That's it. Right. That's it. And then when they don't do their job, you get the blame. <laughs> so, so people, yeah, that is very true. That's very true. Listen, Mike McCarthy has won 36 games in the last three years. Right. Right. Three consecutive 12 win seasons. Mm-hmm. Like teams would die for that. They die to have the regular season success that the Cowboys have had. But you know, this having played there, that it's not just about the regular just, season success. They'd about- rather you go. 10 and 10 and seven and barely make the playoffs and, and go win a Super Bowl, then to go 12 and five and be out in the first round or in your first game for the last three years. So uh, I, they did, I guess they did win the divisional round or the wild card round last year against the Bucks. But when you look at that and you say, Hey, you have no interest in coaching pros. No, I, uh, I got pushback from people saying that they didn't think that you should be the coach of the Cowboys. And I went on this whole thing about, you know, 
uh, your form of coaching and how old fashioned it is, but the Cowboys need an identity. What right. do you think is the, the main issue with the Cowboys right now? Big time players making big time plays in big time games. That that's what I think the main issue is like, See, I've been on every side of this thing, so I know you could dial it up. But if they don't do their jobs, it ain't going to work. And you sit up there, and, and that's why I wish – I remember when I played for the Cowboys and the reporter was coming at the coach. I said, you know what I wish? I wish we could watch the game film in the stadium with the fans so you could see what's said in the meetings. So you could see okay. and say, yeah. you see this? This guy was supposed to have contained, weren't you? Yeah, coach. Right. What happened? I don't know. I want them to see that. <laughs> Who was supposed to do what on this play? Because all plays yes. are designed to be successful. We don't design a play to be unsuccessful, but they don't do their job. And that's just that's the nature of the game at any level. So when you talk about the you know, the want to of the players, uh your your coaching style versus the way that they uh accept coaching in the NFL versus the way it's done in college. Uh, do you think that your coaching style is too old fashioned Almost. for NFL players or yeah, what do you think it is? Are they too soft? No, I'm not going to say they're too soft. I'm going to say we might collide with the thought process of even getting to the game. Okay. My disruption is going to start on Monday. Um, when we watching that film of the previous game. Then we got to flush that. Then you off Tuesday and I'm going to see, okay, if you off Tuesday, but does that mean you don't come in? <laughs> does what does that mean? Because if you want to be great, <laughs> right? Most guys right. Come in, you want to be in there. You know? Then Wednesday, how you approach this new test, this new challenge? Right? When we display the game plan to you, you know, are you tentative about that? Like here, every Friday, I put up I put up film times of the entire team who all watch film. So if you don't watch any film on that Friday, you ain't playing. <laughs> Because no. there's no way you're prepared. <laughs> there's no way you can help us because you're not prepared. You right. don't know what's going on. So you're not right. playing. You're not even going on a trip. So I'm old school to that aspect that I want unity. I, I want these guys to want this. And, you know, right. on social media, you, we got that like button. I want a love button in this game. Everybody Ooh, liking this. Okay. Everybody liking this. I don't want you to like this. I want you to love this. The only way... When I seen this young brother out there at Baylor running up and down that field, baby, that was love. And when I seen yeah, oh, those young RG running up and down that field in Washington, baby, that was love. <laughs> Not everybody on the team it loved love. it, but you did. Yeah. But when you're looking in yes, that sir. huddle and they can't match your love, that's the problem. Right. That's the problem. That's why in college, you know, you see us use the portal because we could, we could eradicate that light real quick. We get some love That's in true. them. We, we get some love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, you don't love this. All right, so I'm gonna ask you a question because it's gonna set me up. Because I'm not, I'm not giving up on this Coach Prime with the Cowboys just well, yet. I know you say you don't want Coach Pros, but I'm not giving up on you it just yet. Up, yeah, you need to give up on it. What, what well, is only, the idea? Only scenario you can come with right now. Only scenario you could possibly come with right now is to throw my kids okay. in. That's the only thing you can do. And I know you're Come on, now. I know you. Come on, you Let's know that's know. where I'm going. First of all, Come ain't on now. one of the kids. I'm talking about both of the kids. And no, no, no. I know what you mean. You ain't doing that. And both, of them, and both of them can play at the next level. First of all, if Shador would have gone this year, Shador would be in the top five. Let's just get that straight. But I said, 100%. no, we've, we've gotten calls. So we know that. Okay. But no, that's, okay. that's not in our plan. Uh, we have a plan. We've always had a plan. And we've executed the plan. 100%. So don't use my kids to get me. Ooh, I like it. So, I, okay. So, I'm, now you're going to make me switch the question now because you <laughs> went there. So, what do you have any interest in following no. your sons to the NFL? No, my babies have always followed me. I'm a dad. I'm a real father. You're a real father. We ain't following our kids, man. Our kids are following us. All right. So, then, so that, that brings me back to my other question then, coach. What is the identity? Like when you when you turn things around at Jackson State, go twenty seven mm -hmm. to six. You, mm -hmm. you now, in my opinion, you have started to turn things around at Colorado, mm -hmm. right? One one game the previous year. Now you guys went four. Changed the whole mindset of the entire university. What is the identity of a team that is coached by you? Um, that's what we're 
searching for right now. That's what we're implementing right now. And that don't start during the season. That starts in off season. That starts with the, yeah. the relationships. I'm, I'm on relationships. My whole thing right now from our first meeting on uh, Sunday was relationships. Coaches establish relationships. Players establish relationships because we're going to relate yeah. to one another and we're going to bond with one another. We're going to know one another and we're going to win because right. of one another. Because right. I want us to be, well, you know, you, you want to be smart, tough, fast, disciplined with character. I always say that, but you got to embody that stuff, man. Like, that stuff is real. See, that stuff don't just happen on the field. Like, I'm sitting up here, and I'm looking at all these grades. If I see anything in red, <laughs> that means that you're dysfunctional. So if you're dysfunctional Correct. off the field, most of the time you're going to be dysfunctional on the field. If, if you don't have attention to detail off the field, most of the time it's going to happen on the field. So I'm looking for balance as well, balance with these young men, as well as taking these coaches to another level as well, because it see, it's not just the players sometimes that, cause our light shines, man. You know how it is, RG. You've been to how we get down. Like shoot, the sidelines of our game is like the BET Awards and the, the American Music Awards. You <laughs> everybody, everybody ain't built for yeah. that. Coaches included. <laughs> Coaches true, included. True. So you got to true. have the audacity to want that light, but to want to shine in that light. And then to want to go to that next level, level up. Everybody's not built like that. So we have to identify like-minded people. That five-star might not be for us. That three-star might. That four-star might not be for us. Come on now. That no-star is because we feel like we can develop him. He's one of our guys. Man, look, I'm just interviewing the mom and the dad, and I see the way they got down. I see what the kid has been through. I see the fight that that kid got. I want him. I don't give a darn what star he has. When you get to to college anyway, nobody cares about the star. Give me the kid. So that's how we moving right now. And and the reason I asked you that question is, be, is because, uh, like I told you, I'm not giving up on the Cowboys yet. But that's what I feel like the Dallas Cowboys are missing. They miss an identity. When I think of the Baltimore Ravens, I think of fast, physical, tough. When that's I right. think of the Detroit Lions, I think of biting off kneecaps. Right. They're going to be fast, physical, and tough. Right. right now with the Cowboys, their identity is what we have seen. So well, your my, identity is based on – see, I know what you're saying. This is what you're saying up under the curtain. And let me get up under here. Which, what you're saying is your identity is based on the stars that you deem to be your stars. That's the identity of the team. The reason you said Baltimore, because you think about Ed Reed, you think about Ray Lewis, yep. you think about Suggs, mm. you think about Sarah yes, Goose, the late Sarah Goose. You think about mm. those. That's what established that. When you're no thinking doubt. about the Detroit Lions, you think about the head coach, man, act like he ready to go. Like, uh, you want to throw you these bags and you want to play some football. Whichever one you want to do, I'm good with. <laughs> exactly. you, you know, that's how he gets down. And that no symbolizes doubt. his team. Aaron Glenn, same way. Aaron was a yes, scrapper, sir. man. Corner, bump and run in your face is a scrapper. So that's that's who that is. And that that's where you're going. I understand yeah. that. But how many people could really walk into that besides the GOAT, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it, shoot, that's probably the only one can take that, right? I ain't talking about yeah. me. I ain't talking about me. I'm talking I, about I, 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 I'm talking about you, but I know who you're talking I'm, I'm about. Talking about the coaching you know? goal. Yeah, yeah. Bill, I'm talking Bill about, talking about Bill Belichick. Yeah, it, it, it's too, it's, it ain't too many people can handle that star, man. Can handle that light. Mm-hmm. Can handle the expectation. Mm-hmm. Can handle all this. Mm-hmm. We have that same thing. Like everybody can't handle this. So that's why you you have to change staffs. You have to change people. You have to get like minded people because everybody ain't built for this. And that's my point, Bill. Bill Belichick, the coaching goat. If if this was directly after Brady left New England, I'm on board. Mm-hmm. Hey man, go to Dallas. the The luster and the lore of Bill Belichick is still there. Now, after, what, three seasons without Brady, and now people are looking at his record with and without Brady, I don't think that his coaching style in the NFL still fits. I don't believe the Patriot way is still the way to get it done well, in today's you. NFL. You're right, but you, I'm pretty sure he's keen enough and smart enough to make certain adjustments. Okay. But the key component okay. to it, let's look at all the teams in the, in the playoffs right now. Let's start off with the right. top-ranked teams. Um, that's Baltimore, and that's uh, yep. San Fran, right? San Fran. Look at the consistency of the quarterbacks. Now, only once where the quarterback from San Fran got a little inconsistent. 
And you've seen the team start to sputter a little bit because of his inconsistency. Over the last several yep. years, Bill Belichick didn't have no consistency at quarterback. That's true. Not, not. Mm -hmm. So that team is going to sputter when he's had a pretty much two decades of consistency at a quarterback position. When you look at the first, right. who has the first pick this year? Um, Chicago. Then, uh, Chicago Bears. Then the Giants. Then this, then that, then that. <laughs> look at all the quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> So you, when you trying to build, you better start with you better go you. find your RG three. You better go find your dog that <laughs> that can lead and understand. And see what's the scary part of college guys is I tell Shador all the time, son, on the sidelines, go get in your uh, lineman faces, talk to them, articulate yourself, let them know what you want, let them know what you need. You know why? Because you know you're not in a huddle in college. You're right. not in a huddle in college. So when was your, true. like, when you, how did it change for you? When the first time now you get in the huddle, this guy's 35, this guy's 32. <laughs> you, just, you just saw his kids in a station wagon being dropped off, so you know he dead serious about this game. <laughs> oh, dead serious. <laughs> yeah, but you're looking at these eyes on third down, and it's different. Oh, it ain't no spread. It's different. But you just call them out, and you see in the back of their heads, it's different. Yep. It's different. So you got to choose based yeah. on, are these guys really leaders? And some NFL teams are not picking leaders, man. They just picking players. In that position, that'll kill you, build you real quick. Yeah, it will. And uh, I'm sure all the Colorado uh, boosters fans, the the <laughs> locker room is happy that that you are staying in Colorado and not interested in going to coach okay. the Thank Dallas him. Cowboys. But I, I I had this conversation on Monday Night Countdown uh, with the crew, and it got very, you know, it, it was a very impassioned conversation. True. And my whole point was this. Whether, uh, whether Jerry Jones would hire you versus what he should do, I think at the end of the day, the reason I gave your name as a suggestion isn't just because I believe in you, but it's because I believe that you would help establish that identity there for mm -hmm. the Cowboys. And that's what they need the most. Right now, the identity is they're going to score a bunch of points. They're going to be dominant at home, and they're just going to gonna lose games in the playoffs when it really matters. And I think they need a guy that can go in and establish that form. This is the reluctancy of our people in our generation. We see a win and a loss determined only by the scoreboard. We don't see okay. that you can lose, but darn, you win it in every other category. Or you can win, yeah. but you really lose it. See, the thing that, yep. that tells me a coach is done is – when not only he lose games, but he lose the team. That that's when the coaches yeah. done. If that hadn't happened oh, yeah. anywhere, see they they talk about our games. They don't understand we won everywhere. So <laughs> that's a different discussion. Eight right. and four, seven and five. See that's a whole different discussion because now they said no 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 he won and he won. Not right. that he won, but he lost. See that's a whole different discussion. Right. You have to wait and catch us yeah. on the up. <laughs> catch us on the up. Yeah. Then it's a I'm whole different you, discussion. It's a whole different discussion. All right, people, you know what time it is. It's time for prize picks. RG3 and the Ones is presented by Prize Picks, and Prize Picks is the most fun I've had, winning up to 25 times my money this football season. So let's get to the bag, y'all. It's super simple. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. It's easy like Sunday morning. Kind of like that vibe. That was a good vibe, right? Okay. <laughs> Testing my skills on prize picks this football season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, and we know I got the skills, so we're going to see if you got them too. You can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. And get this, prize picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, prize picks discount selected player projections up to 20 25% to provide even more value. We winning on and off the field, y'all. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So let's get into it. This week, my prize picks, I'm going to be selecting 
Number one is going to be Amon Ross St. Brown. I'm talking about the Detroit Lions wide receiver, and he's going to have more than 89 and a half yards against a Bucs secondary that gives up a plethora of yards. Yes, the Bucs did win, and they were great in the red zone, but Devontae Smith still went off, went off against that secondary. So I'm going to say that Amon Ross St. Brown it gets more than 89 and a half, and my second pick is going to be C.J. Stroud. The number is set at two. 45 and a half passing yards. And I'm going to say he's going to get more than that. Yes, I know the Baltimore Ravens have a number one defense. But if the Texans are going to be able to win, CJ Stroud's going to have to throw for more than 245 and a half yards. And if they lose, say it's a blowout, I think he's going to still get past that number, a la what Dak Prescott did in this last game, playing from behind, throwing the football down in and down out. So those are my picks. Daily Fantasy Sports is made easy with prize picks. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash RG3 and use code RG3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash RG3 and use code RG3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. Let's go, y'all. Let's get that money. You're talking about, you know, winning and not just winning when it comes to games and, you know, you're a guy that can teach a lot of people how to win on and off the field. And you now you've got a, a book coming out. Talk to me a little bit about that uh, Elevate and Dominate 21 Ways to Win oh, on and off the field. That what motivated that? a beautiful that? copy right here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look 20, at you. <laughs> 21, ways, 21 Ways to Win on and off the field. It's so funny because over the last probably 25 years, I, I have a morning text message that I put out every morning to friends, loved ones, then I put it on yeah. on social media. And it's usually okay. the first thing that pops into my spirit. I'm trying to find it. They usually the first thing that pops into my spirit. I can't even find my own social media. But <laughs> it, it's it's not a, just about that moment. It's just about life. And I want everybody to win, man. I've never had any jealous spirit of bone in my body. Like I want the best RG3 that we could garnish. I want the best persons at that position, regardless of the ethnicities, or social status, or background. I want the best for everybody. So I'm just giving people some life principles on and off the field that can propel you to win. No, that's that's incredible. And not only do you have that, uh, when I and I know uh, you sent me one of them, I, I might just go buy one myself and a copy because it's it's definitely going to be a bunch of gems in there that we can apply to our own lives. But you've also got the the documentary. Yeah, uh, Coach Prime Doc we love that. Uh, on we Prime. Love that. Like, how has that evolved over time? Because I know when I came last year to to call your spring game, mm -hmm. uh, all cameras are around. And you said, hey, these kids are not going to be shy about the cameras because the only difference between yours and ours is the initials. Is it? I wrote that down. I thought it was phenomenal with the way yeah. you said that because you, you put them in an environment where they always got to be on. But how has mm -hmm. that documentary been and how has it aided it's been the great. program? It's been great. I have not met a kid yet that don't want to enhance his followers or his identity right. or to elevate himself. And with these cameras, right. with the light that we have here, it, it's unbelievable the numbers that we've generated. We just had a, a team meeting downstairs <laughs> with uh, compliance and so forth, and academics, and they was telling the kids about not betting and not this and not that. And they said, right. $700 million were bet on Colorado games last year. $700 million. I said, can we get a cut? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, that's what was bet on our game last season. So they were just telling the kids, don't get into that. Somebody ask you, you know, who's playing this week? Don't answer, don't respond, especially on social media. But. And these kids are excited about being in this place. And not only that, seeing our RG3, RG3, seeing The Rock, seeing The Baby, seeing Lil Wayne, seeing all these guys on the sideline that they could glean from. Most of these guys come from humble beginnings, man. So when you're seeing somebody that you've only listened to musically or seen them on a video, now you've seen them right there and you could touch them and ask them questions. And the baby sitting up here and saying, hey, fellas, I made mistakes. And that was the best time of my life because I learned from that stuff. And I was stupid. I did this. I did that. That was, man, you, do you know how invaluable it is for, to a young man that's emulating and imitating this guy? And he's telling you the real, the 100? I love it. I, I love it that 
that our kids get access to the rock and these other players and people that come through our games. I mean, just, you know, one of the big linemen, uh, when Big C came in to meet me after the game, uh, when he was up on a visit, uh, shoot, I, I think it was several different rappers it was right here and celebrities on this side. It was like, they was like, Hey man, you come in here and we ain't got time for this foolishness. You know, they ambushed him. <laughs> but that was a heck of a recruiting trip, man. So it's incredible to to hear you talk about that and just the impact that it's made. So then I'm a believer that your first season at Colorado was actually a success. Yeah. Some people yeah. don't believe that. How would you I, describe I how- if you could use one word to describe that first year at Colorado, what would you use? We implemented hope. Now, uh, there's expectation. We're going from hope to expectation because first year head coaches, and this is hard to fathom, first year head coaches that took over the program um, that were fired, we had the best record. The people that were fired that someone came in and took over the program. I'm not going to get into the numbers of, of, of viewers and apparel and this and that, those are that, that in the city making 21 million every weekend of a home game. I'm not going to mm. get into all that, Ooh, <laughs> but okay. uh, it's, it's been a tremendous success off the field. We just got to make it a success on the field. So we got to go from that hope to fulfilling and exceeding expectations. That's why we go in and get guys on the front lines, defensively and offensively. Yeah, Coach, you, hope is a great word to use because you won't get into the numbers, but I did a deep dive uh, into the, the the viewership numbers for Colorado this past year. And yep. not even just early in the year, but even as you guys got later into the season, the numbers that you guys were drawing is nothing right. I've ever seen for a team that won one game the previous year. Right. I'm talking blue blood programs That's would right. absolutely do anything to get the numbers that you guys were pulling against mm-hmm. Colorado State. Right. So when I see it from that standpoint, I do believe hope was there. I was yeah. at the spring game when you guys sold it out for the first time, I think. And we're ever. praying that you're back that this year. That we hey, sold listen, out. listen, listen. <laughs> you, you heard him. You heard him, ESPN. Let's come on now. Yeah, yeah. You know, we got to get that back and make That's it right. happen. But right. I, I thought that it was a success from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. Hope was there. Now, the expectation, uh, as you said, has risen. But yes. there also have just been people that have been hating on you. Why do you think it is people sometimes have a problem with a confident black man? Because I'm a confident black man. I said, first of all, they don't know what humility is because I'm a truly humble guy when it comes to what I feel like my source of strength is. It's from the Lord. And, and I'm not going right. again saying, I, 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 I say, I believe that's about it. But, I'm always trying to give a opportunity or a platform for my next brother, for my next man, for my next person. Um, hate is so much easier to disperse than love. Love, right. you know, love will get you hurt, you know, and people have been hurt and they've been battered, they've been bruised. And, and oh, yeah. that love, they, they, they rather you hate. And I don't subscribe to that. And also, RG, they've never seen me down. That's true. <laughs> and they, they, they've seen me in the first quarter of my life. I was prime time. The second quarter of my life, I went to television and this and this. I was just prime. Now the third yep. quarter of my life, I'm coach prime. And they like, this nigga, still. When, when is he going to go? <laughs> Yo, how, many, how many quarters did he get? Shoot, in this game. Oh, over, my goodness. In this game, he's supposed to be over <laughs> him. Now his kid, I got to put up with the kid stunting and Holding up, I gotta put oh, up with them. Man. I gotta put up with the the darn shade. I gotta put up with all of this. You mean to tell me when is he gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm built for this, baby. I'm built to last. So that's one of the things, and and I do it unapologetically, man. I don't I don't subscribe to um, being happy and elated that you let me in. No, I kicked the door in. You ain't let me in. I took it. I took it. Then I'm going to crack the door and let everybody in. That's just how I, how I move. And I love people, man. I love to see you exercise your gifts. And they don't even know how to deal with it. They don't even know how to <laughs> deal with it. They don't even know how to deal with your gifts, man. I, like, come on, man. So it was supposed to be over for you, right? Once right. you stop saying when it's supposed to be over, 
Then you ain't hit another game, another switch, and you're like, oh, Lord Jesus, we got to still deal with RG3 now. We, and he clean. <laughs> he's well-spoken. He's articulate. He's professional. We got to deal with this, man. Please. That's why, my brother. That's why, because you know who you are. I know who I am. You didn't let them tell you who you were. And they never have told me who I am. I told them who I was. And they didn't want to believe it. I told you when I came out of Folk Miles, Florida, I was him. You didn't want to believe me. So I showed it to you. That's why. No, nah, Coach, you, you said something at the very beginning when we first started this conversation. You said that, you know, you've always enjoyed the fact that I'm, I have been unapologetically myself. Mm -hmm. And watching you as a fan growing up, it was no question when you stepped on the football field as prime time. And you have continued to be that. And as you've, as you've grown as a, as a guy that I, that I look up to, as you've grown, you've shown different sides of yourself. Mm -hmm. And the way it boils down for me is, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't pop, right? You're just not doing <laughs> enough. You're just not, yeah, you're yeah. not making yeah. enough moves. You're not making enough splashes that aren't just making a splash to make a splash. It's right. because of who you are. So I, I do believe that. And then on the other side of that, I look at some of the, I don't want to say consequences, but some of the things that happened based off of the season you guys had. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you this question. It's a two-part question because you've had some guys on your staff leave. Right. Right. Uh, OC, DC, D-line coach. Uh, I'm, I know I'm missing another one in there, but some people might say, hey, it looks like, some of your own people have abandoned you. No. Do you no. still believe now? Right. After the season that you guys had? What would right. your answer be to that? Well, first of all, I don't think people understand elevation. Uh, I think at this time and date right now, um, I think Auburn is looking for several coaches right now. And I can keep going on and on, but I'm not going to throw nobody out there. Okay. Now you, you have uh, my guy, Coach Saving the Goat. He is so powerful and so strong that he's affected yep. three programs. He's affected <laughs> Alabama by leaving. He's affected Washington by that guy leaving. Then he's affected Arizona yep. by that guy leaving. That's, yep. you know how cool that is. I'm like, coach, you are <laughs> killing them, boy. You are killing them. Yeah. And guess what? All those kids are calling us right now. <laughs> trying to get him. <laughs> <laughs> they want to come so, to Colorado. Exactly. So, you're going to have that. But what I'm not doing is, first of all, we had coaches elevate. So it, so now you mad because the coach left here and now he's the head coach again? Right. Are you, you mad because the guy left here and went to his alma mater uh, and Coach Kelly at Auburn? He's my guy. I call him right now. He's going to be, hey, prep. You, know, you, you mad? Now you have a couple coaches that went lateral, but that's on them. They didn't right. go down. Um, Dennis right. Thurman was our uh, uh, analyst. Now he's going to be a coordinator in Hawaii. That's my dog. That's my partner. So, and the only reason I haven't hired a person to coordinate in the defensive line is because I'm not trying to be quick. I'm trying to be right. Okay. I'm trying to be right. I like it. I'm trying to be like right it. because we have a staff that's built on a lot of guys that's been at the pro level, man, that these kids yeah. can glean from. Like they've been in pro locker rooms in a pro uniform, and I'm trying to continue that. So sometimes I may have to wait for the interview to be over for an NFL guy. You don't know what I'm up to. I'm never caught naked. I'm not no. naked, believe that. I just had <laughs> I just had pulled a trigger. I got I got my drawers on. <laughs> so I like it. That's like not it. the case. The case is we're going up another All level. Right. I've never decreased. I've always increased, man. So and I think our kids deserve it. Our kids deserve it. So it's so funny that when it happens, when it happens, when when you see people moving from my staff is one thing, but you see people move from another staff is another thing. Right. It's all about the narrative or the story that they're trying to tell. Right. And and you saying that about you not trying to be first, you trying to be right. You got to be right. I feel like right now in the media, we could certainly not even right now. It feels like it's been like a, a good five, six, seven, 10 year run where people mm -hmm. are just trying to be first, but not getting the story right. I don't and subscribe. To that's that. just my little my my caveat there. No, you're right. But I don't subscribe when, to that. I don't want to be first. I've I've been winning on my whole life. I know what winning feels like. I'm good. So so yes. I, I'm I know how to win. I know 
with being on the top of the mountain yelling down. I know what that feels like. So I want to be consistent because my kids deserve it here. I love these young right. men. It ain't just a coach right. player relationship, man. I genuinely love these kids, man. They my dogs. I mean, I was sitting up there, yep. you know, handing them chips out of my bag yesterday. They like, Coach, you had the hood <laughs> chips. I'm like, yeah, Amazon, boy. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so we got a different relationship, man. That's why I said, guys, okay. coaches, I want these kids to want not only want to play for me, I want them to want to play for us. I want them to want to kill for us. So that's why you haven't named a DC yet. Yeah, I, I got and, three DCs. And do you? But do you know who? It, do you want to announce that right now? Do you know who it might be? No, it's it might be several different couple, three people. It might be out of three people right okay. now, but they're they're in interviews as well. So okay, okay, they're really good. They really are relational, and okay. they really know this game, know this game, and can utilize what we have here and take them to the next level. I mean, just like Pat Sherman. Pat Sherman is my OC. They, you got a problem with Pat Sherman? Pat, <laughs> Pat was 21 years in the NFL. So what do you, oh, I he mean, he took doing. over someone else's offense and still did well. You know how hard it is to yeah. call someone else's plays? And Pat did a oh, phenomenal yeah. job. The the person that, that, that and I give him so much love because I, I, I know him like a book is my son. You understand, Shador, I think, through during the 30 touchdown, three interceptions, and this is his mm -hmm. third different coordinator in three seasons because we yep. take it up. See, we did the same thing in Jackson with personnel and coaches, but nobody said nothing because I guess we was I was Willie Wonka then from the chocolate factory, and they didn't want to say nothing to you. <laughs> <Right>. But now... <laughs> Oh, man. Now, but now that I'm in another environment, you want to critique. But I change coordinators every year because I want to take it up. To your point, consistency is very important for a quarterback. Yeah. The fact that Shadur has been able to to learn three different systems, uh, or should I say, have three different coordinators now. I guess this yeah. would be his third system with Sherman being able to put in more of what he what he's yeah. more traditionally done. Uh, that consistency is imp it's important for very a QB, but also showing the mental capability to learn mm -hmm. different systems is also important. But you brought up the kid. So we got to know. Uh, you always do this thing where you rank the kids, but I want to yeah. put a different spin on this one and actually throw Travis Hunter in there as well because I know you consider That's him That's to, to be like a son. Yeah. So how would you rank the kids throwing Travis Hunter in the mix as well? Well, first of all, before I answer this, and that's a great question, <laughs> and you're a great father yourself, Appreciate I want to know you, how you would rank yours. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Come on, man. You're going to put me in. No, 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 Listen. no, no, just because Listen. you, you know, you, just because you got these beautiful little young ladies there, you don't want to, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no. You already know. I got the girls. I got the girls. <laughs> <laughs> See, every parent lies, but everybody knows it's a ranking system. Hey, listen, man. It's a ranking listen. system. Like, I know right now something happens to me. Should Shallow has just come for the wheel reading. He's coming for the wheel reading. Right. <laughs> it's right. not going to help. He ain't doing none of that. He ain't doing none of that. So I know my kids, man. So you know who's going to take care of you, who's going to nurse you, who's going to kick you to the curb. You know that. We all know that as parents. I'm just True. honest about that. I'm going to let you off the hook because I know you baby girls. <laughs> I appreciate you, dog. I ain't going to lie. I appreciate yeah, it. I will say this. I got, I, got, oh, I got the four girls, eight, yes. six, four, and about to be uh one so yeah. shout out to gia this is the baby girl that i ran off the field for at the fiesta bowl last yeah. year she will be one on saturday so right. and that's gonna fine. be and, and uh, let's just get this straight and mama's still fine so let them know that now mom exactly that's right mama's still fine so let them know now don't hey, get it twisted mama, like she ain't snap back hey mama's still fine mama's still hey mama's fine. still fine she snapped back and uh <laughs> like i said so we'll actually we got the game on Saturday for the Baltimore Ravens, and we're going to be celebrating her birthday on, on the 21st, which is her actual birthday on okay. Sunday. So, uh, But I do know this. Uh, my six-year-old, Gloria, uh, if, she, if, if anybody's going to like nurse me back or take care of your boy, she's the one that's going to take care go. of daddy. She's she always – so I, I know exactly what you're saying. But let's yeah. go ahead and get back to your, your rankings, throwing Travis Hunter in there. How are how you ranking him out? Let me see. Right now? Like right now? Right, right now, now. Right now. I'm going to throw Shiloh at number one. 
Charlo's been okay. consistent. Yeah, right now Charlo is balling. He's been balling, man. He just he just called me. Yes. You know they're in Paris right now at the fashion show. They they oh okay they, they doing they, oh they doing it big all right yeah Pharrell uh, called and say hey, man you know we are gonna do a deal we are gonna do it inside <laughs> son so three of my boys out there two of them watching you know Bucky's filming everything she doing shallow um walking in yep. the fashion show in Paris two day oh, right wow. now matter of fact they're probably walking right now yeah so Shallow has been balling and he never usually can't claims the number one spot because he does something crazy to get on my nerves but he is that guy right now number two would probably be. Okay. Deandra, yeah, okay. she's been, you know, she's the number two right now. She's consistent and uh, consistent. She listens and she listens when she asks me for advice about this and that. Number three has to be Shador. No, no, Bucky. Bucky's three. Bucky, okay. Bucky's three. Bucky, Bucky keep three. me laced. Bucky keep me laced because you know uh, he's making some heck of a YouTube money. He keeps me laced. Um, oh, he is doing yeah, his thing. It. He's killing it. Um, he's killing it. Then Shador, then Bossy, then Travis. If okay. I put Travis Trav. in front of one of the Sanders, they will cuss me out. <laughs> Come on. I, I was about to say, Coach, don't do oh, it. <laughs> Bossy, my daughter, just walked in here. You know, she plays basketball here. She just walked in here a minute ago. I know she wanted to hold some, but I had people in there, so she couldn't ask in front of everybody because I know she wants to borrow some. I know. Not borrow. <laughs> just hold some. <laughs> Dad, you got any money? Nope. That ain't got nothing. So that's how I rank up right now. But it's continually changing. That's fair. That's, yeah, that's a fair ranking. Like, next uh, year you don't you... text me back, you fall. That, that's it. You fall. <laughs> you fall, the you fall off the list. You fall off the list. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, and I, I agree with you, Coach. You're, you're 100% right. Most people don't want to rank their kids, uh, me included. Because, uh, you know, it just it gets to a point where they, they see that. You know, but they you, might get a little upset them. about it. But you know. But, you know. Parents know. <laughs> Parents know. We know what time it is. <laughs> they just say it in private. Yeah, that's my favorite kid yeah. right there, but don't they tell them. Tell them I said that. If, if your wife tells you, now that's you. You know that's you. That yep. means they're not in a high ranking. They don't have a high ranking. Whatever you. your wife tells you, now you know she get it from you. She, <laughs> that's oh that's going to work with. Did she get that from you? You're like, wait, what you me. mean? Oh, there, yeah. yeah, that means she is never going to be one, of, one, two, or three in the ranking. Never. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. Now, Coach, some of your honesty, uh, whether it's about football, about the kids, all that stuff, it, it tends to get the media pretty riled up. Yeah. Would you say that you were treated fairly or Colorado was treated fairly uh, last year in your first year there? First of all, I would answer that I really don't give a darn how we treat it, honestly. I really don't care. I can't say what's fair and what's unfair. I, I really can't say what's fair to who because – they thought process is not my thought process. Um, I'm going to always come with criticism because of who I am. And then that's going to project on our kids because they play for me as well as the coach. So it would never be the same love of, 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 of compassion. It, it, it's always going to be a use, use type of situation. That, that's what it's going to always be. You'll use that me for sense. your clicks, <laughs> but you're going to hit me <laughs> while they click it. Right. right. That's true. I was flipping through I something exactly the other day. I seen two brothers talking about me like, I'm like, who are they talking about like a dog? Like, it was me. They talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> now, who are we talking about? Oh, and that's me. Okay. Like that? It ain't talking about me. And it was so, and I, sometimes I wish it was a way to just take away a podcast, like, Immediately. It, I wish it was sanctioned. Right. That you because there's no, <laughs> no validation. It's just you're just trying right. to get clicks, man. Like and we gotta notice right. people when somebody's just trying to get your click. And it's yeah, crazy. That's true. That's yeah. true. No, no. It's it's um that I was told this in twenty twelve when I first got into the league. They said, you know, the media will build you up to tear you down. And right. and I, I hate that part of it, of it. And I don't think that it has to be that way. But to your point, a lot of it has turned into that. Yeah. Hey, let's uh, let's use this guy that's extremely popular, doing great things. And let's try to frame it in a way that when if there is a if he starts to fall off just a little bit, right. there's a way for us to attack it and get more clicks that people love a great story. And then they also love to for people to dissect it in a bad way and and talk about them in any kind of way. And I just don't rock with that. But I think that you handled it you handled it the right way this year. 
I don't rock with it. I don't subscribe to it. Like, I don't allow our coaching staff to ever comment on another school. You don't have to put another school down to put us up. I don't play that. Like, our staff knows the way you get fired. Let me hear you talking about another institution with a kid. Now, kids have recorded conversations with head coaches, not just assistants. Head coaches okay. downing us and selling us out and just talking about us like a dog. And, you know, I would politely right. just call the head coach, look at man, um, I don't really know you. I wish the best for you. But be careful because when these kids bring phones into your meeting, right. Room, right. you're exposed to certain things. I'm not going to put you out there, but just keep my name out your mouth. I've had that conversation. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, nice. it's, and it's great. I, I I don't understand how you down somebody to stand up. That don't it don't work with yeah. me, man. God don't bless like that. He don't he don't no, bless he don't. don't bless like that. Yeah, no, and that's sure. crazy to me. So you you, you talk about I agree. Uh, you should never. I don't think it's like. Listen, man. Opportunities and and whatnot. It's not like a piece of pie, right? Right. If you grade at what you do, you're gonna be able to elevate. And when no, you hit no, an no. obstacle, you just got to keep pushing forward, yeah, and you're eventually forward. gonna hit your breakthrough. You don't got to step on somebody to get to where you're trying to go. Right. And and that's where we're at right now in the media. It's everyone's like, listen, my paycheck's more important than that guy I'm talking about or the story that I'm telling. So if oh, I got to say yeah. something to fire people up, I'm going to say it because he ain't paying my bills. I got to pay my bills. Well, there's a way to pay the bills without tearing people down and, and having things attached to their name that shouldn't be attached to their name. It, but there's no longevity and, in that. There's no longevity in that form of tearing someone down. It's no longevity in that. And to be honest, Coach, it feels like it's a little bit of the Cat Williams effect right now with what Cat said on Club Shay Shay with, with Shannon Sharp. And now it's it's not a – I don't want to say it's now happening more frequently. I just think that when something like that pops up, it's like boom, 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 boom. You just start seeing it go spread like wildfire. Not everybody's trying to to do these different things and, and tear people down in a certain way to try to shine a light on themselves. And I say all that because it feels like all of that coming together with social media and NIL and the transfer portal, uh, it has driven away some of the greatest in our game of coaching, yeah, or is. at least gotten them, made it them is. move to different areas. And, and you, you said this, and Charles Barkley agreed, but you believe that all the changes in college football, NIL, the portal, and even maybe even so into the media has chased away the GOAT of college football. Yeah. Why do you feel that way? Um, mainly because I know him and I know his heart right. and I know he loves this game. But when you're sitting there watching how this thing plays out and you're watching the obstacles you got to go through and you're seeing, right. you're dealing with parents that are parents slash agents, uh, <laughs> yeah. slash the bag man, you're dealing with so mm -hmm. much craziness and I, I get it. So I know he's getting at a whole nother level because I get it when I'm meeting with parents and, and these young men. Old school guys that, that were built and built their lives on hard work, dedication and trying to treat people right. They don't see that formula working. But it still does, but they don't have the time. I mean, coach has has done some tremendous things in our game. Coach is, is financially secure times 20. It's like, man, I don't need this. I don't need this. I ain't got time to be a darn lineman on the open market right now is at least half a million. I don't need it. Like, like, <laughs> right. like he, I, I know right. he don't like, I ain't, uh-uh. I want you to play because I want you to get compensated, but play first because you love it. Not the first thing right. to come out your mouth is, is the bag. And he's just right. different. He's built different. I'm built different. You know, but I have right. young kids, pretty much. So <laughs> I can kind of relate to the times in the game. And you know how we deal with right. our kids. Like, we we in it. We in it. Mm -hmm. we, we real dads. We ain't no distant oh, yeah. father. We <laughs> real dads. We, we in, in, we in, I, we I in the trenches with affected. them. Yeah, I know when you're affected. I know when something's bothering you. So we're those type of parents. But, man, I, I just I hope we do something with F like again, because I like to glean from him every year. I like to call him and ask his advice on certain things. Um, okay. It's one thing that he told me that I should have done that I didn't do. And it cost me. Okay. What was that? 
I can't tell you what it is. That, that got to give you the suspense, <laughs> the drama of it. But I told him the situation. I told him what transpired. And he told me how he handled that before and how I should have handled it. And I didn't. Because okay. I'm just different. I should have listened, but the ridicule and the scrutiny to me as an African-American coach is tenfold. Right. And I got to think of all this here. That's a good man. I love him. And his wife to teach a class of all coaches, wives, girlfriends, whatever. She should teach a class on how to handle the stage. And she's not behind him. She's right there with him. And you talking about a commitment to excellence. Wow. What would you say um, your relationship with Coach Saban is? You kind of described it a little bit there. And, and then what's the – no one gets to see the fun side of He's Coach. Like, even fun. when I'm in a production meeting, when I'm in a production meeting with him, I, I got a chance to call his game this year against South, uh, South Florida. And he's an intense guy. Yeah. But I know there's a fun side to yeah. him. Do you have any funny stories with him uh, or about him that you would share? I don't have funny stories, but like when we're sitting on set and we're looking at the lines that's coming up, and then he has to project, to project his lines, and they may be a little different. <laughs> I say, give me that. I'll take that. You take this. Let's do it this okay. way. Like, Coach, how would you do it if you was Coach? I would just say, it. let's say it. Let's do it. We're going to change the whole script right now. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Coach is going to say this. We're going to say that. That's what we do. And that's why right. they come off well. And uh, I, it's been a pleasure working with him because those are two days I get to glean from the greatest. Man. Yeah, I get to sit at his feet and say, hey, tell me about this, Coach. Uh, what happened with this? Oh, tell me about this. How do you choose this? Uh, uh, tell me about your practice schedule. I mean, I get to go through all of that with him. Those commercials are great. And uh, you can never take for granted the opportunity to learn from the great ones. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad that you're uh, clearly taking advantage of that. But then when you look at this from a, a holistic standpoint, the goat of college football is gone in the, from the coaching ranks. Now Shadur's out there recruiting Alabama players. And I want to know what's your pitch? What's your pitch to those Bama players who are thinking about going him. to the portal? How are you going to get them to come to Colorado? I text him, man, you crazy. That's what I texted when I saw this tweet. I was at the crib in Texas. And I saw that. I said, man, you crazy. Said, we got to win, man. We got to win. I mean, that's that's what that's he's true. on. But you're talking about probably our best recruiter is Shadour and Travis. Like, kids want to play with okay. them. They want to get down with them. That's why uh, the whole offensive line has, has been changed. The, the whole receiving core, I'm not changed, but enhanced tremendously. And so I can't wait to see right. um them even get down and get ready to prepare in this off season. I think they started working out like an hour ago. It's going to be phenomenal, man. So it's uh, it's it's something. It's a lot of movement, but it's a price tag with everything right. nowadays. It ain't just a kid, man. It, it ain't just man. The DB jumped in the portal. They need to just jump in the portal with what they cost. It's just make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hundred thousand here, fifty thousand here, five hundred thousand here, fifty. Fifty, fifty, oh my gosh. fifty. Get your walk on these days. <laughs> <laughs> they paying like that, Coach Brown. No, no, I ain't never oh seen that like it, man. God bless their soul. That's unbelievable. I, I, I'm happy for the young man, but this is what I want. I don't just want them to accumulate the wealth and spend it, and because that's what's happening. Right. We bring in one of my homeboys, Richard Fain, who's a financial whiz, to try to teach him about LLCs and and this and that, and how, what to do with money, how they could do this, what they can invest in, and all that. But why would you get it and then spend it? Right. Well, some people out there say, well, Coach Brown, they probably got hardships and all that, and hard this and all that. Well, if you wasn't getting the money, what would you do? You would put your head down and play ball, and when you get to that next level, shoot, then you go for the bank. But I just want them to understand how to manage the fund. Right. Don't let everybody come to you like you're a professional athlete right now with all their problems and their trials and tribulations. Don't allow that. And I hate that part of it. And that's what's happening with some of these kids. Yeah, 100%. Everyone's mooching off of them and they're not teaching them anything. Um, the, I guess the only benefit could be that if they learn at a younger age uh, and go through a couple of mistakes, then when they get to the pros, uh, they'll, they'll have learned from those. But the percentage of kids that are making it from college to the NFL and getting a chance to have a career is mm -hmm. very slim. Uh, as you know, I think it's, you know, I know it's 0.2% from high school, 
right. uh, or 2.2 percent, something like that. So very small percentage. So I agree with you. It's financial literacy that they have to, to really we should, you know, that focus be our, in that on. That should be in the student, that, not just student handbook. That should be a, a course you have to take, financial literacy. Because all these kids, they come here to make money one day. That should be the number one course you take. Yep. So uh, before we get out of here, I want to ask you a couple of quick hitting questions. You can answer them as short as long as you want. But a couple issues, obviously, in college football right now is the fact that it feels like some of these guys are getting 25 years of eligibility. I mean, we got 26, 27 year olds uh, yeah. playing the positions or playing the game. I know we got 25 year old quarterbacks. Uh, do you think that something needs to be done about the amount of eligibility these kids are getting due to the COVID years and the medical red shirts? No, I, I don't. I think it's been fair because COVID threw a, a, a wrench in there that it gave kids another year. Um, what I think yeah. it should be, it should always be if your coach leave, you could leave. It, okay. If your coach leave, you could leave. Other than that, we got to have some a little more stick to it. Because now this is what you're dealing with. That's why we're not um, at freshmen unless they really are mature or impactful. I'm talking about high school kids. Because you grab a high right. school kid and he goes, he comes early, go through the spring and whatever, and he doesn't play like he wants to play. Then he goes back through that spring again because he's an early enrollee. And he's not first team or whatever. You might as well just wave to him because he's going to jump in the quarter on you. <laughs> He's going to do that. That's just yeah. 100%. Yeah. So our formula is unless they're really mature or they can flat out ball, I get him out of the portal because I already know the rights, the wrongs, the lefts, and the, the mistakes that he's made, and he's honest with him, and he sees this as a second chance. So I, I like that aspect of But now when coaches have the ability to bounce, the kids got to have the ability to bounce. With no repercussion. They shouldn't have any repercussion. If the coach is the coach, you should be able to do it. I definitely agree with that, coach. And, you know, we've seen coaches getting fired left and right. Uh, some of the older coaches in the games, we talked about Saban, uh, you got Pete Carroll, Bill Belichick, uh, are all, you know, going to be in different places or not coaching anymore. Mike Tomlin got asked a question uh, at, his, at the end of the playoff he, he game out, at his press conference. Out. He yeah. walked out, yeah. right? So the question I have for you is, just what is the what is needed in coaching today that wasn't needed in coaching, say, 10 years ago? Understanding. Understanding. You got to understand it can't just be your way. You know, although I'm old school and I have a way, but I got to understand how this cat grew up. I got to understand how he was raised. I got to understand his weaknesses and his strengths. I got to understand this young man totally. That's why I'm harping on relationships with all our coaches, with our young men, as well as me. Uh, me having a relationship with not only young men, but the coaches as well. You got to have a little more understanding in life today because what they're up against is not what we're up against. It's tremendously more. It's a bigger umbrella of what they're subject to do in the open time. And now they have means to do it. I would have never fathomed that a kid would be driving a darn Rolls Royce calling in college you know like that that's happening now kids are in lamborghinis that was my dream car was i got in pros man i mean kids are getting that now in college so it's a different game now it's a different thought process and you got to be able to relate to these young men and understand who they really are not the name on the front which is the school and not the name on the back but who they really are and some of the old school man. cats they ain't ready they ain't ready to make those adjustments no that's that's why, Coach, uh, I believe in you because I believe you have just the right amount of touch of the old school coaching in you, but also mm -hmm. the ability to connect with these kids that you're recruiting. I've said it before, but you've been the kid that's been recruited. Mm -hmm. You've been the coach recruiting the kid <laughs> and you've been the parent of the kid who's that's been right. recruited. So to me, all, that gives yeah. you a, an extreme advantage over and everybody else. You're competing that against. talks about the whole situation on television. Look there at the parent, the kid. Add a fourth one too. I've been that guy. <laughs> 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 to talk about that the whole thing as well. <laughs> yes, you have. So as I, as I let you get out of here, I do have to say that I don't know if you understand this impact. You're a very cerebral guy, so I think you do. But the fact that you went from Jackson State to Colorado and you've turned Colorado into essentially a semblance of black culture with who you get to go to the games, who you have support in the program, 
And the guys that you're getting to go there is nothing short of amazing. And I want you to know that that has not gone unnoticed by, by your boy here. And I think that you're going to continue to build greatness there at Colorado as long as you're Amen. there. Well, I'm, I'm thankful, man. I pray to God that you guys are here in the spring game. Uh, and I pray we have great weather that day as well. <laughs> right now, it's snow everywhere. It is beautiful, but it's snow everywhere right now. It is beautiful, though. It was snow last year at spring game. Was, I'm like, yeah. what's going on here, we man? We didn't want that. Yeah. <laughs> we want that in Vail or Breckenridge or something like that. We don't want that right on the field. But, man, I appreciate you, my no brother. You've been, you've been a real one hey. since day one, man. We've always clicked. We yes, always sir. had our thing. And uh, you've always treated me with nothing but respect and honor, man. So I appreciate that. But the best of all, you're a great player, great analyst. I mean, great analyst. But you're a great father. That's that's what appreciate attracts me. You. You're a great father. I love the daddy and I love the little skits. You're, hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Real yeah, you're number one. You're right. If you that close already, you're right number one. That's man. Gloria. That's no, no, Gloria, yeah, six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> She's the number one ranking. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw how daddy say. Showed us that sneak peek of how he came down the driveway that day. I saw that long driveway Daddy was showing him. Like, that didn't even good. <laughs> hey, that you peep good. game. You peep game all the time. Oh, be good. Oh, yes, most definitely. You are so beautiful, Appreciate girl. you, Coach. All right, you tell Mama, you tell everybody I said beautiful. hi, man. You got it, my guy. Appreciate you. All right, God bless you. All right, guys, that was an amazing conversation with Deion Sanders. And before I move on, I have to give a huge shout out to baby Gia right here. As I told him, she is the baby that I ran off the field for at the Fiesta Bowl last year when my wife went into labor. And she'll be one on Sunday, the 21st. So wanted to give her a shout out. You guys already saw Gloria on camera with Coach Prime. Uh, as he said, he thinks that that's, that's the favorite child. I just told him that's the one that's gonna take care of me for sure. But Gia, right here with Goku from Dragon Ball Z. One of her favorite characters. I'm just kidding. She doesn't even know who it is. But she is going to be one years old. Time flies. Say hi. hi. It's unbelievable, man. So happy to be a girl dad of four. Go ahead and walk to mommy. Girl dad of four. Nothing like it being a parent. Uh, and daughters really, really uh, pull on your heartstrings. And speaking of pulling on your heartstrings, I got to give a massive shout out to Jason Kelsey. Uh, he is retiring. It's very seldom that you can say in the NFL that an offensive lineman could really be one of the faces of the league and not just a left tackle who gets paid a ton of money, but a real gritty center with an amazing beard that calls himself Fat Batman. You've earned your retirement, my brother. I'm very excited for what you're doing with your own shows and what you're going to do in media joining me on this side of retirement. And I think the entire NFL owes you a massive thank you for everything you've done for the league on and off the field. Now, before I get into anything else, I got to say the moment at that game between the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Eagles, uh, we had an opportunity on Monday Night Countdown to go on the pirate ship. And I had a dream come true for myself and being able to woo, woo with Ric Flair, 74 years old. Always been a fan of his, always been a fan of wrestling, WWE in general. So that was a dream come true for me. And honestly, if you watch the video, I'm just like throwing him alley-oops. You know, if you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. And you got to be a style and profiling, limousine riding, private jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, son of a gun. Yes, I know all of his lines, but I wanted to set him up to say those lines because it was an amazing moment to see a legend in his element pick the bucks and I picked the bucks with him. Now, that being said, after all the great feelings about Jason Kelsey and Ric Flair, let's go ahead and get down to the nitty gritty with Jay Gruden. So as the game is going on for the Eagles, Jalen Hurts is getting abused in the pocket. I mean, he's getting hit left and right. The Bucks are using different fronts and formations, bringing all types of blitzes. And it looks like the Eagles offensive line is confused. They're either not picking up these pressures or they're just getting beat at the point of attack in one-on-one -on -one matchups by guys like Kalijah Kansi. So Jay Gruden, we can put this screen, put this uh, tweet up on the screen for you. Jay Gruden says, if I ever put a quarterback through what Philly is putting Jalen through, I apologize. Pick up a blitz. Now, picture this. Here's the scene. I'm sitting on the floor in the hotel room watching the game after Monday Night Countdown. Someone tags me in this tweet, in a quote tweet, and, and I see that Jay Gruden has said this. My first immediate reaction was, there's no way that's real. 
There is no way that Jay Gruden wrote that as a serious tweet, because if he did, he has zero self-awareness. Well, he did. And I could not wait to jump on this one. It's very seldom in life that you get opportunities to say things or dunk on somebody who literally dunked on you while you were playing. And I took the most of this opportunity and I put this picture up and said, say what? It went viral. Bananas. Everyone's laughing, talking about it. I think it's over. Oh, no, it's not over yet. Jay Gruden comes back, put it on the screen and says, you weren't prepared, Robert, with a question mark. Oh, my goodness. He says he wasn't prepared. And I came back and I dropped some truth. And the truth of the matter was Jay Gruden told me while I was in Washington in my first year that he did not know how to game plan for me or call plays for a guy who could run and throw like I could. Jay had no comeback for that. And the comeback that he come back, did come back with was very weak. So if Jay Gruden really wants to talk, I'm not going to cuss the man out. I'm not going to call him outside of his name. But what I am going to do is tell you guys the truth. And the truth of the matter is there was a moment in D.C. that is vividly remembered. Everyone talked about it because Jay Gruden went to a press conference and he undressed me at that press conference in a way that a coach should never undress his starting quarterback. One, he robs his starting quarterback of the ability to lead in the locker room. Two, he shows the entire locker room that he does not rock with that player. And three, it shows everyone in the National Football League that you do not want this guy to be your quarterback a la Sean Payton with Russell Wilson. So this moment I'm talking about happened, I believe, in 2014, the 2014 season. And it was after a game. And I said in the press conference that the best players in the NFL have the guys around them play at an extremely high level. No one is out there doing it on their own. Now, the the media pundits and everyone took that and said, RG3 threw his teammates under the bus. And I had to eat that for a long time because Jay didn't back me in the media the next day. He doubled down on it uh, and, and actually picked me apart in the media. But what people don't know is that the only reason I went to that press conference and said what I said to challenge my teammates through that press conference was because Jay Gruden asked me to do that. He asked me to do that earlier in the week. If the game didn't go the way we wanted it to go and we ended up losing, he said, I need you to challenge the guys to be better. And I need you to challenge them in a public way through a press conference. Now, what hurt me about that was the fact that after I did that in the press conference, not only did Jay Gruden not have my back, but he actually burned me with it. He came out the next day and burned me in the media. He came out the next day in a meeting in our team meeting room and burned me in front of my own teammates. So much so that I can tell you right now, one guy who is my colleague named Ryan Clark, he was in that meeting and Jay Gruden put up on the screen, hey, we're going to... When we talk in the media, we're only going to talk about ourselves. We're not going to talk about anybody else. We're not going to talk about what anybody else needs to do. We're just going to talk about what we need to do. Ryan Clark stood up in the back of the room and he said to Jay, hey, coach, no need to beat around the bush. You can go ahead and tell everybody in the in this room who you're actually talking about. Now, everyone in the room knew he was talking about me, but Ryan Clark had to stand up and say that. And when he said that, Jay then proceeded to talk and say, yes, I'm talking about Robert. So I stood up on the stage. I apologized to my teammates for even what I believed was taken out of context. I took accountability for what I said and apologized to my teammates in the front of that team meeting. Now, Jay, knowing that he had asked me to do that and still went to the media and tore me down to the media, even in that room, he looked at me and he said, you shouldn't be comparing yourself to one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time which was Aaron Rodgers, because I mentioned Aaron and Peyton in the press conference. And I looked over at Jay Gruden and I told him I was not comparing myself to effing Aaron Rodgers. And I don't want to say that a fight almost broke out. But when I look and I hear Jay Gruden say things like what he said, not only is it unbelievable that he doesn't think that I don't know where all the bodies are buried. It's the fact that he has zero self-awareness and zero integrity. Because even though he asked me to do something, he didn't have the balls to have my back. And that was the reason that Jay Gruden wasn't successful in Washington. It had nothing to do with me. We won the division title and almost every person in the locker room hated each other. 
Because attitude reflects leadership. So when you talk to me about Jay Gruden, understand that I haven't talked about Jay. I haven't talked about any coaches that have been there in a negative way because I've moved on with my life. But if Jay wants to talk, we can talk. And what you have to first do, Jay Gruden, is take accountability for what you did and what you didn't do. So don't come to me talking about all these sly shots when you're the one who asked me to do something in the media that I haven't talked about for almost 10 years. 10 years I haven't talked about it. Now we're talking about it. So if you keep going, I'm just letting you know right now, don't play with me. Don't play with me. I will absolutely end any credibility that you did have, let alone with that last name. All right, people, that's a wrap for episode 18 of RG3. And the ones want to give a huge shout out to Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Coach Prime, for coming on the show and having an amazing conversation. I know without a shadow of a doubt, you guys took something from that combo that you can apply to your own lives to help you become one of one, or should I say the one in that bad boy as well. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at RG3 and the ones, and also follow us on social media because we're going to be dropping those daily clips for you guys to be able to get excited about what's going on and what's coming in the future. Make sure you listen wherever you get your podcasts at because we're going to be there as well. And I got to say, RG3 and the ones is a way sports and entertainment original presented by prize picks. Couldn't do it without them. And also couldn't make this happen without my producers or the team over at Whispering Oaks Productions. Want to say thank you to them for not just dealing with me every single day, but also getting amazing guests and giving you guys an amazing product that you can consume on the daily basis. You already know, I'm not going to let you go without giving you a little bit of inspiration. So we just had Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday. And I got to say this, guys, the history in our country of racism and mistreatment is well documented. But that history does not have to dictate who you love. Let's show each other love and let's keep marching towards MLK Jr.'s dream. And it's not a joke, not something to be made light of. This is serious business. And us together can go a lot farther than us apart. Make sure you guys follow us on social media, like I said before, and we will see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.